So, g'day everyone. Today's video is going to be a bit of a rambly piece to camera where I update you all on how things have been going producing open science content for YouTube. So it's been about a year since I recorded my first video and since then I've been producing a video every week or two. I've made I guess just over 30 videos now, some of them are not yet on my channel, uh, but most of them have been shared on my channel or the QIG Hanover channel. So I've tried out a bunch of social networking tools over the past year and let's be honest nothing's really ever stuck for me. Somehow whenever I blog, tweet, github something it's always felt more like work without any visible reward. I mean let's face it it's not much fun to build something when it feels like no one's interested. So I've always sort of regressed to the mean and ended up neglecting these social networking experiments. But producing video content now that's been an entirely different experience. I found it to be really rewarding. By far the most immediate and directly positive experience has been taking the plunge to record my teaching. During the past 10 years or so, I tried out a bunch of different techniques and strategies to improve the learning experience for students and to improve student engagement. And well, some things worked, some things didn't. But sharing videos of my lectures has been a resounding success. Student numbers and engagement have gone up and I've received loads of positive feedback. Most surprising to me is the side effect that attendance has gone up. I totally expected everyone to skip my lectures after lecture one and just watch them on YouTube. Instead, completely opposite happened. Attendance immediately improved. With the benefit of hindsight, I suppose this isn't so difficult to understand. It turns out that the students are watching the videos after the lecture and pausing and rewinding bits that they missed out on or didn't understand in the lecture and so they don't they're not getting as lost so easily and that gives them the motivation to keep on coming which is just fantastic for me another surprise for me was the occasion of receiving my first thousand my first thousand views on a video that i produced to be honest i never really expected to top 100 views given the extremely specialized nature of the stuff that i'm doing so it was a big surprise when i got to a thousand and Personally, it was an even bigger surprise that it was for a video of one of my lectures rather than some more popular piece of content. And I guess I didn't expect that to happen. Finally, I wanted to share with you a bit about the experience of producing, producing, editing, recording, sharing video content on YouTube, especially academic video content. So to be honest, it was a huge learning curve at the beginning when I started recording video of my lectures and my, my uh, material. But now it almost seems effortless. The first thing I decided after looking at the first few failed attempts, which I did not share with you, was that I really needed to invest in a better camera. And so I took the plunge and bought a, a uh, relatively high-end digital SLR camera, a Panasonic GH4. So this, this guy can, this is the guy that I'm recording this video on now, it can take video in 4K which I guess, yeah, I admit it seems a little extravagant, but in the end, this investment, I think is continually paid off. And to this day, it pays off that I stretched to, to, to buy a 4K video camera. And this is because when you are taking a video of a lecture, it gives you this extra headroom where you can zoom in on a video and still, even up to two times, and still get HD quality video of, of a board. And so that means you can make out all the equations. I mean, let's face it, there's nothing more frustrating than watching a really great video and not being able to read the equations on the board or trying to sort of pick them out from the blurry security camera style footage of, of, the, of the blackboard. One of the awesome things you can do with this Panasonic GH4 camera is you can operate it with a smartphone. And this is something I use all the time in my lectures because there's this really stupid European taxation legislation that says that if you have a camera capable of recording video, then it gets taxed at a higher rate. And that means that, and what does record video mean? Well, it's defined as record, recording video for more than 30 minutes at a stretch. Now, what manufacturers have done in response to this is to produce cameras that record video for 29 minutes and 59 seconds, and then they stop which is super frustrating in a, vi in a, in a lecture when you know, the lecture goes for say two hours. And that means the camera will cut out three, four times during the lecture. But if you can operate the camera from your smartphone, 
then you can almost seamlessly, when you hear the camera beep, walk over and restart it. It's been a fantastic investment. I really, really appreciate this feature. And certainly if you ever wanted to record content, especially for a long time of yourself, having the ability to remote control things from a smartphone is just unreal. Another investment I made was to get a microphone. I invested in a uh, lavalier microphone. This has been uh, also an investment that, that I feel continually pays off. Uh, it's, that's especially because in teaching situations, for example, there's a lot of background noise and these lavalier microphones do a great job of isolating just my voice. Another investment that I made at the beginning, near to the beginning, was to subscribe to Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, that's so that I could get access to Adobe Premiere Pro. So this is commercial video editing software, and I know that's not for everyone, but for me, I felt like this was a, a really a sound decision. And the reason is, is firstly, for academic use, it's not actually so expensive. And secondly, and more importantly, I can do whatever I want without having to dig through menus because you can just, anything you can imagine, you can Google for. Somebody has tried to do it with Premiere Pro and has a tutorial. So the learning curve is really, really gradual, really easy. You don't have to, you don't have to get frustrated with the software. Someone's done what you want to do and you can always look it up. So that's it for today. Please like my video if, if you enjoyed it and do let me know in the comments what kind of content you'd like to see on my channel or the QIG Hanover channel. And uh, I've got plenty of ideas and I'm looking forward to sharing them with you and looking forward to seeing you soon. See ya.